received the question in what way are angels involved in processes here on earth? Do they work on an individual scale? Do they work with groups, cities, countries? Well, the answer is all of the above in a way. But um, I think a lot of the confusion about this issue has arisen from the way people give names. Um, so there are spirits which take care of a city or a piece of land or a country and um, often these beings are called guardian angels, landscape angels um, but if we use the word angel exclusively for a being which is in union with the supreme being then these beings are not angels um, so a city or a people, um, uh, so with a people, you could mean an ethnic group or a cultural group, uh, do have guardian spirits. And these spirits are of course immensely yeah, wise, influential, powerful um, beings, but they are not angels. So, if you look on uh, the scale of things, you would have the deity. The deity is there to work with one specific aspect for all of humanity. But different yeah, places and different peoples on the earth, they have a different role to play. So they already focus on a different yeah, part of the human potential which they seek to manifest. Maybe they seek to manifest wisdom, maybe they seek to manifest war or love or art, uh, beauty, um, healing. So every, you could say, uh, location or people has their own mix of deities which is involved with that people performing their mission. And what we call like the guardian angels for people or guardian angels for a country, a land or a city. Um, they're often intermediaries between several of these deities and the incarnated people. So a person who's born in a city, which is for instance a very cultural city where there's a lot of music being created, um, Often the people who live in the city, they won't feel a direct relationship to the god or the goddess of music. But they do identify with something which is more close by to them, more visible to them, like the city, the leaders of the city, the great composers in the past. Um, they identify with the history of their people and also the bloodlines, like the talent which has been nurtured in their bloodline over many generations. They feel that talent, they feel that power, they seek to develop that power, but they identify it more with their ancestry than with the deity. So these types of you know, guardian angels or uh, landscape angels or territorial spirits, um, they in a way try to create a blend of energies which they derive from the different deities which are supporting their people and try to um, create conditions where the qualities, where the talents of their people can develop well. And to create these conditions they try to seek out influential people and to inspire them, to support them, to heal them so that yeah, in a way they have uh, an agent in physical form which can help them to manifest things. So now we come to the interesting question, why would an angel or a deity or a guardian spirit need an agent if they have all this power? This is due to how the nature of the cosmos works. So there are many different layers of consciousness. You can, you can Pair it a little bit to a stack of pancakes. And for every being, it can do whatever it wants on its own pancake. It can build houses, it can 
build mines, it can build airplanes, create art, whatever it wants to on its own level. But it is not allowed to do things on higher levels, nor is it allowed to dictate on lower levels. It has a lot of power, but it is confined to its own level. Beings on lower levels can look up, they can be inspired, they can choose to follow, choose to be led by them, choose to be supported, to open up to them, tell me what to do. And when there is such an opening, then the power, which exists on the higher level, has a way in on the lower level. Um, so in this way, the higher energy, the higher power can manifest itself. But it needs an entrance. If there is no entrance, there is no way for it to manifest itself. So it needs permission from the beings on the lower world, who are in a way the kings of their domain, to say, you're welcome in my house, please. Uh, come in and make yourself at home. But unless somebody invites them in, it will not happen. Now you can compare it a little bit to the stories of the vampires who cannot enter your home unless you invite them. But it's not true only for vampires, it's true actually for all spirits from a higher level that unless they're invited in, they cannot manifest. And this is why you often get like a layer, layered structure of passing on impulses. So the deity itself would need a priest or a priestess to manifest its power. As we know, the, there are virtually no priests or priestesses left. Um, so the deities can only work through intermediaries. And these intermediaries would be the landscape spirits, the guardian spirits for people. And these guardian spirits can also only act through a human which accepts them, which identifies with them, which sees themselves as being a champion of the region, of its history, of its culture, um, and wants to work with that inheritance and therefore opens up to the guidance and support of this landscape spirit. Um, so angels themselves are kind of a little bit further removed still from this process. Um, from an angelic perspective, it is in a way um, subcontracting. If you look at the perspective of an angel, it knows that there is a process of evolution of consciousness. And this evolution of consciousness is basically being carried out uh, under the guidance of the deities. The deities help all the species on a specific planet, in a specific place to evolve. Only if something is interfering with that process, or it is not going smoothly, or there's something gone wrong, then angels will yeah, um, start to pay attention. It's in a way like a project manager. Like they're the project manager and they receive reports. So um, the humans complain to uh, the different deities, spirits, landscape spirits, other things, and if they cannot solve it or the problem becomes too big or too complex, it will go up towards enlightened beings. If the enlightened beings also feel like, oh, I'm not sure, then they in turn will tend to contact the angels. So there are problems when angels get involved um, in matters as they are happening on the earth. Um, because with every project, as you know, projects generally take twice as much time, they consume twice the amount of money that was planned, and they only produce half the results, if they produce results which half of the time doesn't happen at all. And the same rules for project management, unfortunately, also apply to spiritual projects. So even the process of human evolution, of consciousness growing on our planet is not a very smooth process. Half of the initiatives, if not more, fail utterly. Uh, a lot of the things which do manifest themselves are corrupted, are flawed, are faulty, have 
unwelcome side effect and in general there's a lot of friction, a lot of people are burned up or used up in the process of getting anything established. So there is a high cost and usually low results. But nevertheless the work must go on. With that new project being initiated time and time again, spiritual evolution on this world would stop. So, to be able to have a good functioning system project management, people need to be able to relate to the place they live, to the local spirits, to their cultural spirits, to their ancestor spirits. And these can teach them what is your specific role, what is your specific talent. Do you want to serve your people? Do you want to serve your surroundings? Okay, listen to this god, listen to that goddess, develop yourself. So you can be a support for your community, you can guide and inspire your community to move forward, to help the process of growth. Ultimately, within every people it would be great if every people could generate at least a few um, spiritual masters or mistresses and enlightened beings, so they can coordinate between the different gods and deities and have a very intimate understanding of both sides of how it is to be human and also um, how all the gods and deities work to create a very good system of project management. But for all this to work, also these there are channels needed, there are places needed where the energies can flow down, so people need to devote themselves and places need to be devoted. For instance, a university can be very devoted to all kinds of inspiration, knowledge, uh, an art college, the same, an artist community, the same. So these are openings where impulses from these higher worlds can easily come down to the people. And you can use churches, temples, places in nature as well but also such places need to be maintained because if a place of learning and discovery like a university becomes a place of business and administration um, if a place of healing like a hospital ultimately becomes just another business then the connection with the higher impulse is lost in this place there's only a horizontal impulse to the money, to the people, to the desires to the egos and the higher impulses from the guardian spirits, uh, the landscape spirits, the angels, the ascended masters, the saints can no longer reach us. So people need to be able to be receptive themselves but also places need to be available for the receptive people or for people even to develop their receptiveness. Many people could pray to certain power if they would be taught how, if they would have a place where they could really feel that impulse very strongly. So creating holy places really helps to create holy people who can receive these higher impulses and then guide us. Um, so if you do feel that personal calling to work as a priest or a priestess or as an champion of the region or of um, uh, your culture, of your race, that's great. And start working with that. And ultimately all these works can be approved or disapproved by an angelic being. And these angelic beings can also halt projects. They can say like, okay, um, this part of the mission for that people is over. They should stop that now and think of something else to do. They can retask entire regions, they can retask entire ethnic groups and cultures. And these are things which can only be done on an angelic level. Not even an enlightened being could retask the purpose of, for instance, the Chinese culture or German culture or Iberian culture. 
those processes are really on an angelic level. So angels are involved, but usually on a quite large scale, quite a large time scale. And it is possible that if there is such a change is needed, that they will really support the people involved in the change. They will send them dreams. Go here and do that. Um, they will send them support. They will inspire other people to support them, to uh, give them money, to lead them, to bring them to certain places where, which they need for their development to be ready to perform their task. So angelic involvement is there, but usually only in helping to support um, a big change, a big switch of things, or to create a healthy infrastructure. So angelic beings will also support um, great artists who really help to build the cultural identity of a people, uh, like great painters, great writers, often there is angelic influence in that. Um, also great scientists often have an angelic influence because the invention of, for instance, magnetism, electricity um, created lots of changes in our whole society, in our way of living, in our way of thinking. And uh, these big things which need to happen, uh, they have a more direct angelic oversight than the small everyday processes. So it is possible to uh, notice angelic influence around like very great leaders at pivotal moments in Earth's history, for instance, uh, Alexander the Great, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, um, and in the Second World War you had, of course, Churchill, Roosevelt and Stalin and Hitler, who were all, in a way, um, watched very closely from this angelic world, because what they did helped to shape really the course of many millions of people and more importantly the course of society and the human race itself. So there are times when the angels watch closely but usually they do not work directly but they work through their agents because of course an angel has the power to manifest itself in all other layers and to do everything which an enlightened spirit can, which a deity could do, which a guardian spirit or a landscape spirit could do, or what a human could do. But if they did, what would be the purpose? They would be depriving all these beings on the lower levels from their chance to practice, to learn, to teach themselves, to evolve themselves. So, angelic beings are generally minimalistic in their involvement. If a being on a lower level can do it, they will let the being on the lower level do it or handle it. It's only if the being on the lower level cannot deal with it, that the angel will get involved and do it for them or teach them or help them to do it. But, yeah, you could say uh, the divine will is a very hands-off kind of process, like try, try to walk by yourself, try to do it by yourself, and if you fall and cannot get up, then help will arrive. But it's usually only as a last resort, it's very minimalistic, and um, we do feel that if the angels get involved, it's usually true usually more admonitions and inspiration of other beings trying to get them to pick up the slack to do what is needed and if that fails and still things need to happen then very direct involvement can uh, occur and this can be done by an angelic being on all levels it can manifest itself on all levels it can act on all levels but usually we do not notice it because if an angelic being takes the place of an enlightened master or uh, how will we know about it? If an angelic being says to a deity, oh let me teach them about love or beauty because it's not gone completely right, how will we know? We don't. 
we only receive an impulse and in general we cannot tell whether it is originating from an angelic being or from merely a spirit which is beyond our comprehension anyway. So for our perspective if we look up all is light and it's very hard if you're staring into the sun to see the details, to see all the sunspots and to see all the coronas and the things which are happening in this light. And it is only by practicing ourselves, by being on a higher level of consciousness ourselves, that we can start to see differences. If we are on a higher level of light, then we can see things on that same level of light with a normal clarity, instead of being blinded by it. So this is why our own practices of increasing our level of consciousness, going into higher levels, higher vibrations, is very useful or determining what is really going on instead of being just on a receiving end. It is not necessary for me to live a useful spiritual life to do this, but if you crave understanding, it is essential.